have been diagnosed with a very rare neurological disorder called the stiff person syndrome, which affects something like one in a million. Celine Dion revealing her diagnosis on Instagram this morning. The Grammy winning singer had to postpone and cancel some upcoming tour dates. She has what she just called stiff person syndrome, which causes sudden severe muscle spasms. She says she has no choice but to concentrate on her health, saying the condition has affected every aspect of her daily life. Seeing Celine Dion had rescheduled her spring 2023 shows to 2024. She canceled eight shows scheduled for the summer of 2023. Well, joining us now to talk about this uh, rare disease, our Nine News medical expert, Dr. Paul Coley. It is rare, one in a million, but you actually have seen a case of this. I've seen one single case in my entire career in medical school. It was so dramatic to see this because this is not just muscle spasms, everyday muscle spasms mm -hmm. that most of us get. This is an inability to move your muscles because of that stiffness or that spasm. You could you know, not be able to walk. You could fall over if you're standing. And sometimes these muscle spasms are actually triggered by environmental stimuli, like a, a, a sound could trigger the muscle spasm or you know, stress, having a lot of anxiety could trigger it. And so, it could be a small spasm, one area, or, is it, or does your whole body spasm, yeah. or how, do, how does it portray itself? So it kind of starts gradually, and, and essentially what happens is most classically you present with lower back muscle spasms and leg muscle spasms that start out maybe just like back pain or leg pain, but then as the disease progresses, it can start to become more severe. It can be asymmetric, so it involves one side more than the other, and it can leave you with an inability to use that muscle group. So for example, if your leg muscles are involved, you could have trouble walking or standing, with Celine, I would worry obviously about other types of muscles being involved as well, you know, for her performance. Um, and, and she and the, said her vocal cords, she even mentioned in some state. When you bring up all this, though, it makes me say, well, if it starts like as a little spasm, like most of us have, it's got to be really hard to diagnose. It is hard to diagnose, but we're getting better at it. So essentially what we think causes it is an autoimmune reaction. And the reason we think that is because, A, it travels with other autoimmune diseases, most commonly diabetes, mm -hmm. where your immune system's kind of attacking your own body. In this particular case, the, the chemicals that are involved in turning the volume up and down on your muscles, on your motor neurons, neurons basically that control your muscles um, but B you can have antibodies so 60 to 80 percent of people who have this condition have an anti-GAD antibody that's positive in their spinal mm. fluid and I wonder if that's what the case was for Celine. Is that the test ultimately to, to know that you have this syndrome and not just a terrible case of, of spasms? Yeah, I think that's probably the test that would sort of make it most likely to have it. Now, some people don't have this antibody, have a different one. Breast cancer runs with it, too. But it's really a, a, a conglomeration of all the symptoms put together that helps to diagnose uh, and determine it. And what we're seeing is it used to be called stiff man syndrome. They actually ended up changing the name because we're seeing it more in women than oh. we see in men. And that's also something that's poorly understood. We know that autoimmune diseases in general are more common in women than they are in men. This doesn't mean you're predisposed to anything that we would think of as more severe like ALS or MS or something that could uh is it a signal that something either has happened or is going to happen later in your body? No, but it's a great question because it often gets misdiagnosed as ALS, Parkinson's, mm, or some course. other neurological condition. And as you can imagine, the treatments, the prognosis, and, and all can be very variable depending on what it is. But this is really that neurotransmitter is not working to modulate your motor neurons, and so they're firing when they shouldn't be firing, which causes those muscles to go into spasm, inability to use them. So if it's that rare, the treatment must be really hard too, because like what works? If you have one in a million, how are you gonna find out what works? Really hard, so un it's not able to be cured. It's, it's usually progressive, so people get worse oh, over no. time. So essentially we just sort of treat the symptoms, and the symptoms of muscle spasm are treated with you know, antispasmodics, so muscle relaxants. You can also use medications like Valium or Ativan, because those me medicines help that neurotransmitter be overexpressed, uh, so they modulate that. Some anti-seizure medications work for it as well. We're now studying you know, IVIG, which is a way to turn down the immune system, 
system, kind of change the volume on the immune system and see if that helps to control them. IVIG, tell, tell me what that, what, what are you talking about? Intravenous there? immunoglobulin. So it's giving you a bunch of antibodies that turn off your immune system. It's a way to non-specifically turn off the immune system and prevent your immune system from making antibodies against you know, these neurotransmitters. So if it's not at, at present curable, is it preventable? I mean, if you get more iron in your diet or you eat acai berries or whatever the, the magic potion is, is there anything that might help you not get it? I wish we knew. Yeah. We just don't know because it's mm. so rare, it's so poorly studied. And we don't really completely understand the pathophysiology because some people will just have one set of motor neurons involved, in other words, just your back or just your leg, and other people will have their brain stem and really their entire kind of systemic motor neurons involved. How devastating this diagnosis for her and for anyone with this. So. Okay, thanks for explaining that though, Dr. Cole. I think I l we learned a lot. I mean, never heard of it ever before until today. Well, one in a million, and, and she has it, and you've seen one, so that, that also is one in a million, that, that, that both of you are familiar with it. Sadly for her, it's something she's going to have to deal with. Dr. Paola Coley, good to see you as always. Thanks.